uh, PKA karate fighting. And we'll be back at Assembly Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right after these messages. The Wellerweight Championship of the United States. They're standing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They love this guy. He takes his nickname from Sylvester Stallone and Apollo Creed in the fight Rocky. He's a promoter. He has a karate studio. And you got to wonder what Dan Magnus is thinking right now as this crowd is going bananas. He's coming into the lion's den. 25 years old, and he's doing it all. Fighting, promoting, running the school, boxing. He's doing it all. He's six foot 153, 33 and two is his record. Dan Magnus is 17 and seven, but he has avenged every fight that he has lost. Now what's interesting, Joe, Magnus told me before the fight that there's no way he's gonna lose to Apollo Cook. He says he is on his way. Let's go to Bob Young for the official announcement of the two fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, time for tonight's main event. This will be nine rounds for the Professional Karate Association's United States welterweight title. Introducing first, in the blue corner, from Washington, D.C., with a professional record of 17 wins, seven losses, ranked number seven in the world, Dan Magnum Magnus. His opponent, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, with a record of 33 wins and two losses. The PKA United States welterweight champ, Dale Apollo Cook. All right, there's the, uh, the two fighters. Dan Magnus, there's the record. There's a story there, and Joe Corley, a couple of guys who want this very, very much. Cook will leave tomorrow for Las Vegas, Nevada, talking about uh, fighting regular boxing. He's 8-0 as a fighter. Magnus, the former roller skating champion, wants this as bad as Cook does. I got to believe it's going to be one of the real dandies. Both fighters very, very intense. Uh, Dale Cook has had a lot on his mind in putting this thing together. And Dan Magnus is not the kind of fighter that you can underestimate. Dan Magnus wants to become the champion of the world more than anything in the world. I talked, I talked to Dan Magnus earlier, and I uh, mentioned he's looking sharp, he's changed trainers, and I asked him if he, he felt he had the momentum to handle Cook. You do you have? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I feel that this is a good opportunity for me to get that world title. Cook's a very strong fighter, you know, has good punches, good kicks, but it's just a stepping stone. Uh, after I finish off with him, it'll be Alvin Prouder for the world title. Danny Magnus, a very confident and uh, intent fighter. You heard his comments. He'll have all he wants tonight from Dale Cook. They call him Apollo, and he's something else. Apollo Cook. I talked to him earlier, and uh, I asked him if he was looking beyond Magnus, possibly underestimating him. Well, I think that the welterweight division is the most talented and colorful and exciting division in PK karate. So you can't underestimate anybody in this division, least of all Dan Magnus. He's in the top ten, and he's beat some good people. He's a very good kicker. And... Uh, I, at first, I, I wasn't training as hard as I should have because I'd just come off a big fight in Denver, and there's a little emotional letdown there. But um, I had a dream one night about Dan coming after me as hungry as I came after Mike Brennan when I wanted the title. And uh, that made me get up in the middle of the night and go out, and I ran seven miles. I've been training hard ever since because I, I know he's hungry. He's coming to get what I got, and I can't let him have it. Um, as far as the title shot goes, I was told when I started karate that I would learn patience, and I've, I've done that because it's been four years since I've been waiting. And I'll get that title shot, and when I do, I'm going to make the best of it. And win or lose, I praise the name of Jesus Christ. The words of Dale 
Apollo Cook. We're about ready to go. We got to introduce this guy to our left. Yeah. Folks, if you see this fellow in an alley, do not fool with him. If you see him on the street, do not fool with him. This is Tornado Tommy Williams. All we saw him do earlier, Joe Corley, is break five uh, granite blocks with his feet. He is as good as I've seen. He'll be joining us uh, on the telecast. This man is the super welterweight champion. The demonstration he put on earlier was just incredible. Well, thank it, you. Tommy Williams has knocked out nine, is it nine or ten opponents, Tommy, with a spinning back kick. That has become your trademark. You've knocked out more fighters than anybody in the sport. Has it been with the kicks? Has it been nine or ten? Twelve. Twelve. Well, right. we were close. close. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Williams came in. He had his brother and put on the exhibition. The fans gave him a standing ovation. It was something else. Tommy, uh, the fight as you see it with Apollo Cook, I don't know how much you know about Magnus, but uh, your thoughts? I feel that it'll be a very good fight. Uh, Dan, is, Dan is a good defensive fighter, and Dell is a very strong offensive fighter. I think it'll be a well-balanced fight. Uh, I don't look for a knockout. Okay, I expect it to go the distance. Tommy, how much will the crowd affect this uh, fight? Listen to the music right now. They're getting psyched up. Will it affect it's, the uh, It's uh, definitely the fight? firing up, Dale, and uh, whenever you got a hometown like this behind you, it can't help but help you. All right, we're going to take a look at the demonstration that Tornado Tommy put on. You watch this, folks. You're not going to believe your eyes. His jumps jump front kick that uh, Tommy did here. Tommy, tell us how you spring from the right leg and kick with that same leg. It's all in the momentum and timing of the body, getting everything together in one motion. Looks like Magic Johnson. <laughs> Tell you what, he's up in the air there. That is something else. There is his brother, and this is Bobby. How old is Bobby? Uh, it's Robbie. Robbie, how old is Robbie? He's 21. I'll tell you what, that is an expression that is just priceless there. Now watch this, Tommy, describe it. My jump spinning back kick, this is one that I've knocked out more people than anyone else in the PK with. You can see the power of it. Five granite blocks. The power goes all the way through them to break the last one. Something else. All right, Tommy Tornado. Tommy Williams will join us. We're ready for action here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It should be a great one. Dale Cook defends his title against Dan Magnus. Scheduled for nine rounds. Cook is 8-0 as a professional boxer. He's 33-2 as a PKA karate fighter and Joe Corley he says he wants to win and hold both titles feels very very much loyal and the loyalty to PKA karate fighting he is not forsaking and he just wants to do both I'm not so sure he can I'm not either he uh, he showed some really good hand speed in his last fight with Joe Garduno there in, uh, in Denver and uh, he trains with the same people that Quick Killers trains with, and you see a lot of that style in him. Now, what's going to be interesting, Magnus says, hey, people think I'm a counterpuncher. I'm going to be in his face right away. I'm going after him. Let's see what happens. The only thing that might hurt Magnus that I see off the top here might be this Dale Cook straight right hand. What Magnus confided in us earlier, Cook doesn't know this, is that earlier in the week, Magnus got an 18 stitch gash opened up right down the left side of his head right where his part is as a fighter fell on him when they slipped and his knee landed in Magnus's crown and split his head open 18 stitches Tommy uh, your early assessment of the action here there's a spinning back kick by Apollo uh, Dan looks a little bit flustered there already in the fight uh, Dale looks much stronger to me Apollo Cook a very religious person. He uh, became a born-again Christian one year ago, and he said he has put his uh, life in the hands of Jesus Christ, and he likes himself very much uh, the way things are going. In the meantime, he's dealing with some very powerful kicks that are coming up to his head from Dan Magnus. He's been picking them off so far. Magnus was a roller skating champion. He went to karate to improve his roller skating ability. Started at age 13. Creed uh, actually went to karate because he was being picked on. He only uh, weighed, I think, 135 pounds when he's 19 years of age, and people picked on him. And a lot of people go to uh, karate for self-defense. There's a foot exchange right above us. Cook had almost ducked into a jump spinning back kick by Magnus earlier, and I have to say Dan Magnus is, is oftentimes a spoiler. Tommy Williams, you got in the ring with him one time in Washington, D.C. when you weren't at 100%. You took a fight with him on a short notice. Right. Uh, Dan is very defensive. I chased him the whole fight. I couldn't quite catch him because of, of my conditioning, just like you say. But uh, fighting Dan, style has changed somewhat. I think sure you filled in for a fighter there in Washington uh, who was 
injured the last three or four days before the fight. Uh, he has a lot more power than he did. All right, we'll be back with more action at Assembly Center in Tulsa. You've got plenty of time, Dan. Don't you work a little hard in the second round. Keep after him. Keep after him. Keep moving to avoid and talk to this guy. He's got his life in order. Let's take a look at some of this action, guys. Magnus was off balance then and didn't get hit by Cook. The crowd went crazy when that happened. You see Magnus coming down, didn't quite get the elbow in the way of that front kick. Round two scheduled for nine. Irv Brown, Joe Corley, and Tornado Tommy Williams in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is for the, the United States Weatherweight Championship. I had that first round even 10-10. Neither fighter more effective and both fighters very effective with the kick. Dan Magnus, Tommy Williams is not intimidated. Now his attitude has changed 100% in the last two fights I've seen him. Definitely stronger. Dan is a lot more aggressive now. He's not laying back like he used to. There's a good right by Cook. And the knees of Magnus Buckle as he fights back. There's the clinch. Oh, Magnus landed right. a good shot against Cook in the corner, and Cook came right out blasting with that right hand. Cook also has a great left that we saw in the Gardunia fight. This is Apollo Cook, and he throws himself off balance. Rio de Janeiro, our referee from Topeka, Kansas, steps in. Round two, scheduled for nine. <laughs> Apollo Cook with his name on the front in the black trunk. Magnus. Black trunks and the yellow stripe. Cook landed a good right in the infighting. Good give and take by both fighters. Magnus tried to close in with a long, wide hook. Tommy Williams, Cook out of the way of it, came back with a good three-punch combination. Uh, Dan is starting his attack a little too far away. If he's not careful, he's going to run into something. Cook's really loading up on those kicks against the ropes, isn't he? He sure is. The words of Tornado Tommy Williams, the world super well away champion, along with Joe Corley. I'm Earl Brown bringing you the action. Good exchange in the corner right above us. There's a front kick by Magnus. You must throw eight kicks or else you're penalized. Either one of these guys has got to worry about that. They are blasting with the kicks and blasting with the hand combinations. Ten seconds left. And Tommy Williams in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the United States Welterweight Championship fight. Match on Dale Cook and Dan Magnus. <laughs> Cook the champion. And the action was great in the uh, second round. As both fighters came out smoking. This is the corner of Dale Cook. Cook is the promoter here. Has his own karate, karate studio, as does Dan Magnus. Joe, you're involved in karate, and most of the guys do have their own studios. They teach you self-defense. I rode in uh, from the airport with a guy who goes to the uh, karate school. He just loves the guy. Here's another look at some of the action in round two. It's where Magnus had uh, had come on to Cook, and then Cook nailed him coming out of the corner. All right, we're back for round three. Magnus in the black pants with the yellow stripe and Apollo in the shallow black, front, uh, black uh, pants, that is. Apollo Cook, who is 8-0 as a professional boxer. How'd you score that last round, Joe Corley? I gave the second round to Cook, 10-9. I've got him leading 20-19 to at the end of the first two. So the fight is very close. Tommy Williams thought it would go all the way. The crowd reacted. I didn't think it was that good a kick. There's There's a Granny kick. Magnus goes down because he overextended. It was a great kick. Magnus just blocked it, Tommy. Uh, Dan looks a little flustered. I think he's trying to tag too much. Okay, I think he's a better defensive fighter. He should lay back and uh, try to get Dale to come in and open up a little bit. And, Tommy, he made the point that uh, Dale expects him to be a counterpunch, and he's going to be in his face tonight. He's going to change. I have to comment about something Joe mentioned earlier. 18 stitches were taken in Magnus's head, and you hope that will not be a factor because I took a look at that thing, and it's, uh, it's a, an ugly-looking thing. This man's a competitor. Definitely. Round three, scheduled for nine. The world, I should say, the United States Welterweight Championship. Cook wants a shot at the world title. It's a good left by Cook. Of all those blows that Cook threw then, only the first one, the right back to the kidney landed. The other two were picked off by Magnus. <laughs> Nice shot by Magnus, glanced off the glove and then off the cheek of Dale Cook. There's that spinning back kick again. And Cook is going 
Cook is very effective with his kicks as he landed effectively. There's a front kick, and the fighters clinch in the middle of the ring. 15 seconds left in round number three. There's a wild left by Magnus. All right, there's the end of round three. And we'll be back with the action from Tulsa right after this. Of self-defense, karate is taught not as a religion, but as a means of self-defense. Dale Cook, current United States professional karate champion, has been teaching karate for 10 years. Dale's classes combine the essential elements of all styles of karate. Men and women of all ages develop more self-confidence with this exercise for mind and body. Dale Cook's Academy of Self-Defense, 5th and Sheridan behind Action Cycles. In karate, to be the best, you have to learn from the best. This is the corner of Danny Magnus. You heard him. If it keeps up after this round, we'll have to start warning. But right now, it's about even. So I am All right, place. that's good. That's Rio de Janeiro coming over to Magnus, Joe, and he pointed out that a warning uh, will be issued. Here's some slow-mo action in the last round. You see, those did not land on Magnus. The crowd loved him, but he had everything in the way, and he came back in his usual arrogant manner and threw the same thing back at him. Look, round four, scheduled for nine. Third round, Joe Crowley. Tornado Tommy Williams here. Tommy, uh, your progress thus far with Magnus. He is moving a little bit better than when he started his uh, last couple rounds. I feel like, you know, he had the lead. Joe, how'd you score the last round? I gave the last round as an even round on the first of this exhibition. I got it a 30-29 fight right now with Cook and Hill.
Cook is looking very poised, but he's getting a tremendous challenge on my scorecard from Dan Bagley. Joe Corley, the former middleweight challenger, has a good getting back kick by Cook, along with Tornado Tommy Williams, who is a world champion. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Front Three. kick by Magnus. Another sidelinder by Magnus. Roundhouse. The round kick went right into the left kidney then of uh, Cook. Magnus will set you up by aiming for the head, but he wants to go to the body with those kicks. It's the old theory that if you keep drilling those kicks into the body, two things will happen. The man will tire out and he'll stop dropping his hands and allow you to go to the head with both the kicks and the punches. Magnus's wife is very much involved in his training. She went, look at it, missed by Cook before it brought the crap to its feet. Jump inside, crescent kick by Cook, just about an inch and a half off target, Tommy. It's a well-balanced fight, Joe. Uh, they seem to be neutralizing each other pretty much right now. It's pretty even. You yeah, take a look at this crowd. Everybody's on the edge of their seat because they know that the hometown guy is getting all he wants from this man, Danny Magnus. <laughs> Dan Magnus changed trainers two fights ago, and his whole attitude is different. Cook is good with his hands. He's much better with his hands than Magnus, but Magnus can kick. You must throw eight kicks. That's no problem, as you pointed out, Joe, with these fighters. Oh, they are just blasting them. Cook's best weapon this round, that right hand, that straight right hand. I thought in round one that might be the thing that hurt Magnus, that hurt Magnus in this fight. He had a dandy. We'll go back to the corners once again. This is Danny Magnus' corners. Right now, I blow my nose in. Let me blow it. Dan Magnus uh, has done extremely well. You heard him bait. Well, that's all right. Thus far in the fight, but I've got him behind. One more round. Barely behind. He got well. four rounds to go. You want to get a little more aggressive. Move in on. Move in on. Danny Magnus really believes that Cook doesn't protect his speed. head well. Joe, your thoughts, uh, and also I might ask Tommy about that. Does he protect the head? There's a jump spinning inside Crescent. Smashed. Magnus's glove back into his face, but no real damage. Most of the damage done by Cook shot. What about Magnus in his hands? Is he going to have trouble dropping him against Cook here? Uh, no, as far as just talking about Dale leaving his head open, I think that he does that to draw him in for those kicks. All right, good point from Tommy Williams. Along with Joe Corley, I'm Irv Brown. We're in round six, scheduled for nine. We've had great action here. PK fight. How do you score this one, Joe? I've got Magnus down by one point, 49-48. Remember, my score is unofficial. We are in Tulsa. We are in Cookland, so it might be wider than that. There's a spinning back kick by Magnus. He's been very competitive. Cook resting a little bit, taunting Magnus. There's just a little front kick. Skip side kick, pulling side kick. Cook is using and blasting into the arms of... Oh, nice! Inside horse kicked in by Magnus, and Cook is embarrassed by it. So he's coming back and making Magnus pay for it. Boy, Cook is upset. You saw a little bit of temper there. Lost his cool for a minute. Not Magnus, by Magnus, uh, though. He is staying calm and collected, Tommy Williams. I think that uh, what that was is Dale got a left in, and he thought he stunned Dan there for a second. Just as the kick went over Dale's head, Dale snuck in a left. I don't think it was so much anger as it was he thought he had stunned him. Danny Magnus looks to his corner, getting instructions. There's a right by Magnus, a little high on the head, didn't seem to bother Apollo Cook. We'll see Cook do some things sometime reminiscent of former world middleweight champion Bill Wallace. When somebody would hit Wallace, he would just get all over him to let everybody know, including the guy that hit him, that he hadn't hurt him. Cook thought that was a low shot down on the hip. 20 seconds left. Round six, scheduled for nine. Magnus, a little off balance, went to the body with the right hand. Got to believe this will go all the way, guys. Who's in better shape? How do you see it, fellas? The conditioning is even, I'd say. Uh, Both fighters came into this thing in shape. Crowd just loves what they're giving him so far, Tommy. I think Dell is uh, giving Dan a little trouble with his jab because of the reach right there. Right? Right. Dell is using his jab very well. Yeah. Six more minutes left. Let's go back to the corners and listen in. See what they're telling Apollo Cook. 
told him that you're doing all right. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. You ain't hurt. You're hit. Pretty deep, you know. You're hitting him too hard. You're hitting him too hard. You can sit there and take the thing out of it. I may want to get 80 in this round. Go on, Al. Okay. He's just out there. He's just out there. Well, Grace, next round. Water. They're saying to Cook that Magnus is just out there with him. They're saying he's no real threat. You saw that shot. There's that shot that Tommy Williams just saw that well. That left hand snapped his head back. As Magnus was coming with that inside X kick. Six more minutes left. A PK karate fighting from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Three rounds left. Danny Magnus trying to take the title away from the man against the ropes. Apollo Cook, this fight is even. How do you have this fight thus far, Joe Corley? I've got Magnus down by two, 59-57. He is not in any way intimidated or is not giving up, has not lost his cool this entire fight. And he's in there with a tremendously conditioned, well-balanced Dale Cook. Cook ran seven miles a day preparing for this fight. Magnus sparred 12 rounds every day, so, and he uh, shakes his head there that you didn't hurt me. Crowd behind us telling Cook to wipe the smile off Magnus' face. Cook is so quick with that spinning back kick. Tommy, if you were in Magnus' corner, what would you be telling him now? I would try to fake a little bit more and get uh, Dell to commit himself, and then move in as Dell attacks. I Dan asked, needs to counter fight a little bit more. I asked Danny Magnus what kind of a factor would be fighting in Cook's hometown. The officials, would they be intimidated? He said he didn't think it was a factor. He thought he'd get a fair shake. He just had to do his job. That's a good left by Apollo Cook. Tommy Williams is one of the great strategists in this sport. I mean, he picks his opponents apart. I think that's good advice for Dan Magnus uh, faking before he goes in because he's got to get past that reach. He can't reach with the jab. 20 seconds left in round number seven, scheduled for nine. Magnus against Cook, now in the center of the ring. Cook is, Magnus, I should say, has not done much to cut the ring off on Cook. He's let Cook pretty much go where he wants to and operate from whatever distance he wants to in this fight so far. There's a good right fight. Good shot. Magnus at the bell. Magnus staggered Cook that time. That's a tough kid, though. Cook is going back to the uh, to the corner, and he doesn't appear to be hurt. We got to get another look at that shot, Joe Corley and Tommy Williams. The adrenaline on. The adrenaline on. Pour it on. There's the man who threw that punch. Let's go to his corner and listen to his advice. All right, what he's hollering about, Joe, that's the cut with the 18 stitches right there. This man is a competitor. Yeah, he could have very easily canceled with uh, 18 right, stitches in his head there. Now he's ordering the corner man to make sure that he gets his stuff in there and gets it in there fast. Yes, get this out of the way. Well, you hear it. This guy wants him. Get this out of the way, he says. Well, I tell you what, this is as good a championship fight as you'd want to see, Tommy Williams. Exactly. It's a tough fight. It's well balanced, just like I predicted. Look at this. Look at Cook and Magnus. Get after it in the far corner. No holes barred. Great combination in by Cook, punching and kicking. They both know it's very close. Joe Corley has Magnus down, too. We're in round number eight. I've got him down by two, as you say, 67 to Cook, 69. Magnus' corner people told him it was close, but uh, two points is close, but relative to two rounds being left, he's going to have to really come on. Good right well, hand then by Cook, caught Magnus coming in. And he looked over here and he winked at us like he's in full control. What about those kidney shots? What does that do to a fighter? The kidney shots with the spinning back kick. Well, if they land solid, they can stop it. If you throw them the way Tommy Williams throws them, they'll stop a fight. There's, there's that front 360 that Cook likes to use every once in a while. I feel he uses that kick more as a confusing factor to try to get uh, his concentration off a little bit to open up for a hook. All right, Cook on his toes now and is dancing. Magnus needs to really do something. He is behind, according to our scoring system. Round number eight, that punch didn't land. Cook... Cook shakes his head. 
Rio de Janeiro watching closely to make sure that Cook is not holding inside. Uh, at this point, I think Dell is saving it for the last round. This is round eight scheduled for nine in Tulsa. On the line here tonight, the United States Welterweight Championship. Danny Magnus gets hurt by a left by Cook. And up here. Cook knows he's got him in trouble now, and Magnus is able to hold on. Magnus came in then, Tommy, with a wide shot and ran into a left hook on the way in. Uh, Dan is a survivor. He can take it. He is a survivor. He's a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> He's a survivor. Tell you what, sure. it's been a heck of a fight. One point foul to Dale Cook well, for holding. That might something, Joe. He was warned earlier. Yeah. Once again, we'll go to the corners. This last time, Matt Hollow Cook. See, Magnus not watching his hook, Tommy Williams, and he ran into a sharp shooting left hook of Cook. Uh, he's trying fruitlessly just to charge in there. He knows he's behind. He's trying to get some points, and uh, he's getting a little frustrated. And he has a tendency to attack from too far away. Did you see what Apollo Cook did in between rounds? We're still in between rounds, but he starts stamping that foot to get the crowd wired up. He knows how important the ninth round is. This guy not only can fight, he's a great showman. Uh, I expect Dale to come out smoking this round. The words of uh, Tornado Tommy Williams from Oklahoma City, and he put on a show that was unbelievable. Listen to this crowd. This is round nine. Scheduled for nine. How'd you score that one, Joe? I gave that one to Cook 10-9, but he lost the point for holding, so it made it 9-9. I've got uh, Magnus still down by two, 78-76. This is it, round nine, scheduled for nine. It looks like Dale Cook's gonna pull it out, but Dan Magnus made him earn it, Tommy Williams. He definitely did. So both of you feel that Magnus would need a knockout there? Uh, yeah, I think Dan would have to knock him down or knock him out to even bring the fight closer, winning it. Apollo Cook defending his title against Dan Magnus. One point. Taken away from Dan Magnus for holding. There's a spinning kick that landed high. A spinning back kick right on the button of Dan Magnus. Yeah, it came around with enough force to knock Magnus's arms into his face, but Magnus came blasting back from that. Magnus has got, as I say, as much guts and determination as anybody in this sport. Because he came here, Tommy Williams, without a whole lot of talent, Dan Magnus did. Most of all, hard work. That left hand of Cook buckled Magnus's knees. Dan is a very stubborn man. I told him two years ago to get out of fighting that he just didn't have the talent. He said, no way. It looks like that cut on his head has been open. He had 18 stitches. 30 seconds left in the final round for the United States Welterweight Championship here in Tulsa. Magnus against Cook, and they have fought hard for nine rounds. Listen to this crowd, guys. I tell you, Dan Magnus has made me look foolish for that advice. I'll tell you, in a fight like this, Phenomenal shot, right hand shot in by Magnus. Not enough left in it to hurt Cook. Both fighters have given their all. They both look like they're in great shape. Finishing up here tonight. Magnus a little tired, but I'll tell you, it hadn't hurt him fight. A great fight in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Both men holding their arms up as though they won it. All right, we'll uh, be back to Tulsa, Oklahoma right after this. Well, you know, taking nothing away, he was a great fighter, but I feel this cut still is in the back of my mind. And uh, I just hope I can get a rematch with him. 
you know, under better circumstances. But I wanted to show that even though I would have cut it, even though I had a week, I could have canceled that like, like other people do. But I wanted to show, you know, I want this title. And I'm just not going to discourage me. And I'm just going to go back to the gym and fight harder. I got an offer to fight Mike Brennan in September. And uh, I said, well, I'll think about it. But I'm definitely taking it in September. I'm going to knock Brennan out. And then I'm just turning it back for him or Prouder. This hasn't discouraged me one bit. It just makes me meaner. All right, good luck to you. Thank you very Thank much you. for an excellent effort. All of us enjoyed it. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. All right, so that's Danny Magnus. We want to talk to uh, Dale Apollo Cook, and we'll get him over here. Dale, can we talk to you just for a minute? Receiving, well, he, I mean, first things first, he's going to kiss this lady, and I don't blame him, Joe. You would, too, you know. <laughs> Dale, congratulations. You uh, retained your championship, got your 34th victory. You really did get all you wanted from a game, Danny Magnus. I want to knock out so bad here in Tulsa. I just keep rigging these guys. They just will not go down for me. I hit the guy. With, I loaded up on some kicks as hard as I could kick, and the guy took him. Usually, even if it hits him on the guy in the arm, it'll lay him out. This guy was tough, and I got a lot of respect for him. He surprised me. All right, you're heading for Las Vegas, Nevada tomorrow. You're very serious about uh, owning two championships, one as a karate fighter and the other as a boxer, and you're 8-0 as a boxer. Yes, sir, I'm 7-0 as a boxer, and uh, those are all pro fights. I'm ready to move up to the eight-rounders now, and um, there's a demand for good white fighters out in Vegas. I'm going to go out there and see what I can do. Um, I've been told i got good hand speed, a good footwork, and good moves, so maybe somebody out there will be interested in me. Uh, Dale Cook's looking for a manager. <laughs> well, Joe Corley and Tommy Williams, not only does this guy fight well, he handles himself well. We'll be back with more from Tulsa, Oklahoma, right after this. Look, we'll agree, it had the technique, it had the strategy, it had the tactics, it had the guts, the heart, it had the charisma, it had everything. It was a great fight. You mentioned charisma. Can you believe the interview Magnus and Cook gave us, uh, how Cook wanted to knock out so bad, and Magnus says, this isn't going to defer me, I'm going to be back. I mean, here's a couple of guys that not only can fight, and I mentioned this before, hey, they can talk. They're not dummies. They're, they're very intelligent people. Well, I've said this about Dan Magnus before, and he's making me look bad. I mean, I'm one of those people who said to Dan Magnus, look, you don't have the talent to be in this sport and he said uh, you're absolutely wrong he said I've got the talent I just haven't brought it out yet and he's showing us what guts and determination will do for a fighter I mean he looks tremendous now if you said that take two weeks off and give it up Joe will you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I wish uh, but I tell you you can't take anything from Dale Cook boy he was a beautiful fighter in this uh, in this fight Absolutely. All right, tell me about what's happening uh, next. Atlantic City, 